Okay, now I make a check. I hit the king here. Um, I can go B4. Let's get creative and play B4. I don't, I don't know if it's right, but let's keep keep it going. What, what, what do you guys... Let's go here. Let's go bishop h4, bishop g3, hit the queen. Okay, just gives us a free juicer, and now I'm just going to win. Can I move the pieces with the eye tracker? No, I cannot. Maybe there's some advanced plugin or something I could do it with. We're going to get a patented ice skater here. Look at this beautiful patented ice skater. Let's keep, let's keep going. Let's not play the front. Let's play Scandinavian here. Let's go here. Maybe C6. Okay, big shout out to all the Germans who are watching as well. Um, yeah. We're going to go C6, Bishop about 5, I guess. Uh, let's play, let's play, let's play e5 here and hit the bishop. Moin, moin, maista. Yeah. Uh, let's just go bishop b4. Okay, um, anyway. Can I do puzzle rush? Uh, the problem is it's going to mess up the layout, but I'll try to create a second layout. Uh, for the stream tomorrow so we can at least do a little bit with the eye tracker um but i just don't have a setup right now so it's it's too risky because i can end up messing up this whole 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 layout and we already had some technical technical issues um at the at the start so i i really i don't want to mess around right now there's a great pin here jaren is on the job okay let's go bishop f5 big shout out, by the way to jaren is caring uh, unfortunately for my man this is maybe not good, but maybe. Oh, he just blunders. I got to say. Thank you to Minnesota Jim for the five gifts. Thank you to Kirschberg for the prime. Dave one with the tier one. Headbo reformed and Captain Penguin for the prime. Thank you so much. Let's keep going. I'll update the score shortly. I'll update. I'll, I'll update it at seventy. Let's go here in D five. Let's go Bishop G four. And now I close the I close the triangle, but the bishop is outside. It's outside the pawns versus being inside and stuck behind these these pawns. Now the bishop is out. I can close the formation. How often am I in contact with Gary? By Gary, you mean Gary Kimovich Kasparov? Um, I haven't spoken to Gary in a long time, actually. I mean, I spoke to him briefly during the St. Louis events, I think, uh, in between some of the games, but I haven't spoken to him recently, so it's been a long time. Also, uh, condolences to Gary. His his mother did pass away, I believe. I mean, I'm, I'm, time's flying so quickly, so I don't know exactly when it was. It feels like it was yesterday. But I think Gary's mother passed away about three three weeks ago, maybe. So uh, condolences to Gary. I only I only met his mother on one occasion when I was when I was working with Gary um, in the summer of 20, 2011 in, in Croatia. But uh, someone who definitely uh, she definitely played a huge role in his life. And I I don't think Gary I think Gary would be the first to admit that he wouldn't be where he is today um, without all her support and encouragement. She was at all she was at all the tournaments with him uh she was probably his, his biggest fan his biggest supporter so uh, condolences to gary because I, I don't think i ever actually publicly said anything so uh but i hope i hope gary's gary's doing okay let's just drop back here i've got this op on a great diagonal my other op is good uh wait that's just a free free horse now i'm gonna go back and play like knight before bishop c2 maybe at some point yeah let's just drop back they have supernova for the tier one as well thank you so much appreciate it thank you Let's just trade and take the juicer and take the juicer. What happens when I look at the ceiling? Well, same as like when I look on my other monitor, you guys, because so I, I obviously have my subs and my uh, chat on the second monitor. You see how it just vanishes because I, it can only it can only cover the first monitor. Um, let's take. <laughs> good one good one i don't i think that you're trying to troll me but thank you toma for the 410 uh let's go here no but the eye tracker it only tracks one screen so when i look at the when i so so like when i look over to the to see who's resubbing or who's writing in chat for example obviously i don't uh, obviously it goes off because it can only it can only cover one monitor i think i don't think it can cover two monitors maybe it can i'm not i'm not sure but i don't think so Thank you to Bogera for the three months to play h6, kick the knight out and go a4, a3, a2, a1, and just win the game on the spot, kind of. Um, I think I can just go here. 
Show legal moves, definitely not gonna do that. One second. Yeah, so, um, yeah. All right, let's keep going. I just push the pawn all the way down, A2, A1. How do you calibrate it? Uh, there's some software, there's a Toby experience software and the Toby Ghost, which you use to, to try and um, calibrate it. Okay, resigns, let's keep going. Okay, let's play, um, not the Dutch. What else can we play? Let's play the semi-slav. I haven't really played it much. Okay, he plays the London, so I'm gonna go for him right away with queen b6. Let's create the triangle. Update the wins. Let's see, what are we up to? We are up to, um, we are up to, uh, we're almost up to, uh, 70. I'll, I'll just update it, update it to 70 one second. Let's go knight c6 here. Sorry, white king's Indian what? King's Indian attack? Oh yeah, yeah, for sure I can. Yeah, I love the king's Indian attack. I mean, this is a London system. It's very, you know, it's like, it's typical London. You know, like when I think of London, you think of like a city that's way past its prime, but you know, it's still, it's still pretty relevant in the modern world. And that's kind of what the London is like. It's like, it's like this opening that like you, you you know it's it's not great it's like it's not it's not as good as it was 100 years ago but it's still very solid and still very important so um that's what i would say about the london opening by the way speaking of london why is it why is it like raining and cold in la it's been like raining and cold the last like three days like we're this is not london and we're getting london weather here in la and i'm kind of annoyed i'm not gonna lie Let's just eat the rook on a1. It's called winter, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know, but I thought it was always supposed to be sunny in LA. I live in Vancouver, I'm used to it, yes. Well, I mean, I Vancouver, I, I almost ended up moving to Canada some years back, so I'm very well aware of Vancouver winters. I mean, but if I was in Vancouver, I wouldn't even be in Vancouver right now. I would just go up to Whistler, go go get go get a yurt, and uh, just go, go do some snowboarding. Shred some pow. Uh, maybe queen f5, e5, queen, sure he's a move here. Let's go queen f5, I'm gonna go queen h3 and checkmate him on h2. Okay, let's go for the kill. Oh, he's got this, but I have g5 still, luckily. Skiing is so much better than snowboarding. I'm, 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 a, I'm one of the cool kids, so I prefer snowboarding, but yeah, yeah. Let's just take and let's just eat the juicer. Uh, thank you to Akshay for the prime and the simple sanity for seven. So what do I have to some traction? You know, one thing that's amazing, I, I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to say this. One thing that's amazing is the amount of streamers who are streaming shots now. There are something like close to 300 streamers streaming. I remember when I, when I first started streaming in 2017, I think it was July 2017. I think there were not more than 10, 10, 10 um 10 chess streamers period on on twitch at all um so what i would say is amazing to see the growth the amount of people who are streaming chess every day like i feel like when i when i go to bed or before i go to bed i usually like i pop on twitch very briefly and just see the recommended channels and there's so many chess channels that are recommended um and just seeing seeing all the growth it's incredible so i would say um i think as far as chess goes there there there's content that everybody wants not everybody likes my content, for example. Not everyone likes Levy's content or Anna's content or Botez's content. You know, you could go on and on and on. So there always are people who who like uh, who like different content. And and so what, what I would say in general terms is that um, just you have to find something unique, something that's different. Whether it's the style, the explanation of how you explain it, whether it's the, you know sort of playing, you know playing classical games, explaining stuff like that. Whatever, or not classical, but rapid games or, or whatever. Like you have to find your niche, and I think. Um, I think there, there is an audience for, for everyone because chess is so rich. There's, there's no one way to teach the game. There's no one way to play the game. And so it's very content rich. And I think it's just mainly try to find something that, that other streamers perhaps aren't doing or, or you aren't really seeing it as much. Um, yeah, Jerry, of course, Chess Network was, was the OG. He was, I think he was, I mean, he's the OG, the first guy who was truly streaming chess. I think Hutch might have been streaming chess before him, but Hutch was not doing it. Um, like that was not his main, main, main thing. So, um, so yeah, I think, uh, you know, I think as far as, uh, the OGs go, I mean, Jerry is the OG. He was the first guy streaming chess, uh, on, on Twitch and, uh, much loved him because without him, I mean, maybe we're never even here to begin with. 
I'm gonna go Queen H5. It's not a good move, but I'm gonna try to get away with it. Still remember Hutch's tsunami attack. Yeah, Hutch was definitely streaming chess, but I, I, I don't think that was the main thing that he was doing. He was doing it. Um, uh, he was, he was just streaming chess, chess because it was one of those things he really liked, but it was not his main focus. But those are the two guys. Yeah, those are the two guys. Yeah, Hutch played it on and off. I mean, Hutch, of course, was 1400 even back then, so very strong chess player. But yeah, Hutch and Jerry, those two guys. But but Jerry, Jerry definitely deserves the due credit. I like Anna, Levy, and Rosen not as much, but I like yours. Best. Like I said, you know, it's one thing, actually, Chessbase says this to me, and she's very right, uh, which is worth noting, which is that, um, you know, in order to, you know, there are always going to be streamers who you watch or who you see who are streaming where you don't like their content. That's just the nature of it. But that's actually a very, that's a good thing because it shows how, how rich, um, how rich and diverse the, the whole stream, the whole category is and how there are people who like all kinds of different styles. I don't see how he stops checkmate and Uno moves. I mean, I guess he can sack the queen, but otherwise he's made it. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. Thank you to Olaf Uvenson for the prime and you the humor for the two. But yeah, I mean, it's, it's amazing to see. I think, you know, to me, the thing that I really, I'm, I'm proudest, I mean, I'm happiest about and also in many ways proudest about is the fact that people like Danya and people like Krikor, who are, who are very, very strong grandmasters at the game of chess, um, that they have a chance to make a living. They're, they're, they're both, no, sorry, not Danya, but like Krikor, for example, Brazilian, he signed with FURIA, the Brazilian esports organization. To me, that's actually what I'm, I'm happiest about because I think there are a lot of, um, a lot of people forget that you can be really good at chess, you can be a grandmaster, and many grandmasters, they end up teaching, they, they can't really commit themselves to the game the way that they wish they could. And and so uh, to see someone like Crick or to see Dania uh, having the success they have, I think Dania right now with like 8,000 subs or something along those lines, is it's really, really, it's great to see. Let's just castle here. So for me, that's the thing that I'm that I'm happiest about. Let's just say go 93 on YouTube. Daniel King is the OG. Oh, I have no idea. I thought. I mean, how long has Antonio been around? Play F3. I mean, how how long has uh how long has uh was I don't know if Danny King was before Antonio or not. But I mean, I feel like when we think of YouTube, everyone thinks of Antonio. Isn't it getting boring to win all the time? It, it's boring for now, but they're, pretty soon I'm going to start playing against players who are really dangerous. First, let's lock this bishop out. It's staring at a pawn while the bishop is going nowhere in a hurry. Um, and now I'm going to go here, maybe bishop b2. I really like my position. It's very, very happy. Queen b3 is a move. Queen b7, pressure on the diagonal too. Antonio posted her first video in 2016. Okay, let's go f4 and f5. Let's go for the, let's go for the pin of the two horses. Yeah, Jerry, I spoke about Jerry a little while ago. Yeah, Jerry is definitely the OG on Twitch, without a doubt. The birds of King H1 does, was uh, basically to avoid things like this, this takes, where it's a check on the king and the rook at the same time. That was the main reason I sidestepped with the king there. Uh, I guess I'll just go here because the horses are still under attack. But yeah, in general terms, what I would say, that's what I'm happiest about is that is that people like Dan, people like Krikor, who are who are very strong players. Very, they're, I mean, they're both grandmasters, legitimately strong players. Um, that they they they're able to make it. They're able to make a living. And even for someone like Dania, the, he's doing so well on Twitch. I think at some point he might even have the opportunity to uh, to go play um, go go play and try to improve his rating or, or get higher up. So I think it's it's really really great to see. I've actually kind of misplayed this, but I should still be winning with Bishop G5. So I have F6 at some point. Am I happy in life? I'm I'm very happy right now. Yeah, I'm very happy with where I'm at. I watched the Esipenko interview. Yeah, I mean for me, like I've said, I think I'm a little I'm in a little bit of a different position. I mean, I've been playing chess for so long, professionally especially, 15, 15 years more or less. Um that, you know, at some point like you, you do see you sort sort of see the, the end end of the sort of the the, the career, you see you see the light at the end of the tunnel in a way. And so for me for several years now, I've really wanted to um I want to see if there's something I could do more educationally as well. 
Uh, and so for me, like what, what's happened on Twitch has been really, really great. I've, I'm really enjoying it. Let's go Knight of five, H4, H5. But I, I would, I would not, I will say this. So you guys, I'm not retired first of all. And then secondly, what I would say is I would be, I would be remiss if I didn't say that when I see some of these games in Tata still, I don't see, I don't think like, why are these guys invited? I, I can, I can play better than they can. So I would be, I, I'm not going to say, so like, you know, even if I'm happy doing this, I'm not going to pretend that there aren't some of those games that I see where it's like, man, I could play better than those guys. It's going to IG6 here. I'm not retired. No, no, I'm not retired. But I'm just saying sometimes once, once you've been around for so long, you sort of start to see that, you know, that, that end period potentially. Okay. Let's see if I can make a checkmate here. And checkmate. Let's keep going. I wouldn't have played D5 in the target game. Yes. That's a that's the most obvious example. Yeah. Let's go D5 and takes. Let's go here, maybe E6. And also what I would say, <laughs> is he car retired? Good one. Yeah, that's that's the Chess Bay just copied the link to the, the YouTube video. Yeah, I'm not retired, but I think, you know, I think the thing is when you've been playing for so long, you do sort of see that, you know, you can see the end in sight and you sort of start, I think it gives you better perspective on what you want to accomplish. Uh, this doesn't really do anything. So I just kicked the knight back, but it gives you, it gives you like, it sort of gives you more um, perspective. Like what, you know, what, what, what do you, what do you want to do down the road? Where do you see the game going? And for me, like, I mean, chess has, I, I am who I am because of chess. So, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, 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 that's not going to get it done. Um, seriously, Hikaru, you're 30, bro. Oh, thank you. Thank you, man. I know I'm, I'm 30 years old. Exactly. Yeah. I'm, I'm very young. Thank you, man. Thank you for the compliment. Appreciate it. No, I'm not 30. However, I'm 23. In, in fact, let's play D4 and C4. Let's go C4, Knight C3 here. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, I'm joking. Uh, but, but the point is actually normally with chess, your career lasts till about 40 ish. I would say that the average chess career now, this again is based on the past. Chess is changing. It's becoming a much younger game. So it's hard to know like what the, what the peak period is in general. Um, but traditionally it's been, let me go back. I'll, so I'll give you guys a little bit of history. So I would say if you go back maybe hundred to 150 years ago, the best chess players in the world, they were able to play at a very high and consistent level to their late fifties or sixties, potentially players like Steinitz, for example, or last, or these were guys who were very, very good for a very long time. Um, now, in the more modern era, there were players like Smyslov or Korchnoi, who until about their 60s, they were competitive um, in like the, I would say 19, 1950s, 60s, 70s. There were a couple of players who were able to, but then it started getting younger. So around the time of like Karpov, for example, Karpov, I would say was still competitive until his like early to mid 40s. Um, and this is like the early 90s, I would say. Um, but after, after Karpov, Kasparov, Kramnik, all these, all these guys, mostly they started peaking in their mid thirties. It was like mid thirties and you sort of around 40 ish, you start falling off. Um, so because of that, it's it, up until recently, I would say it was till your forties. Okay. This guy aborts. So up until your forties, you're probably competitive. There are exceptions. People like Korchnoi, Korchnoi is a true exception. He's one of the all timers, uh, by, by far and away in terms of his long, his, his longevity. Um, he was still playing competitive tournaments in his seventies. I think maybe even, maybe even up to 80 or thereabouts. Um, there are players like Anand or Gelfond. There are definitely players who, who, uh, who, who, who are exceptions, but I would say around 40 is, is generally considered when you really fall off and you aren't competitive anymore. Um, so yeah. Okay. Let's just, um, let's just take and take. I'll move the bishop back. He can't castrol. I have C3 here. Cover the squares. Um, so normally it's like 40, but I feel like nowadays players are getting better younger than they used to. So because players are getting better in their late teens, early 20s, I actually think the peak of a lot of chess players is, is getting even younger to the point where when I said it was 40, I think uh, I think nowadays nowadays players like Rajabov, for example, or myself or Levon, like we're still very competitive, but I feel like there's a good chance that it's actually be you, you peak and you you end up declining significantly early, earlier. Like for me, I think it was 30 when I, when I, um, uh, when I, when I, when I had a little bit of a decline, uh, and Magnus, for example, he turned 30 in November and he has not played well online or over the board since then. So I think we're actually getting to where there's going to be a shift and you start getting better younger. Um, that's a free horse. 
where you actually you, you end up becoming wash a little bit younger than than before let's go knight f3 and bishop b3 now, I'm not saying he is washed but I think we're getting to a point where his players get better younger and younger you you become so good in your teens instead of your 20s that like you see it's just it naturally happens like that um I'm not retiring no of course not I'm just saying I think that's going to happen down the road where you see it with players and they peak at younger ages than they were before uh let's just take the horse and take the knight no puzzles today but we'll do puzzles um we'll definitely do puzzles tomorrow for sure we'll do puzzles um as well as tight as well as tilted Tuesday however uh in about two hours we do have arena kings coming up so that's going to be coming up in two hours let's go knight f6 we won't see Magnus winning again no I didn't say that I'm just saying that he's had a little bit of a decline it feels like since he turned 30. why is it shifted younger because it's all about technology that's why because uh Play, in, the, in the old days the experience came from playing games over the board and from being around other really strong chess players so you had this experience that built up over years and years of being around the other top players whereas now what's happening is technology is sort of flat in the field where um where basically what you have is kids can just learn from using the using the software and the technology and so that age factor that experience that you get from being from having played for many more years and so forth it actually doesn't exist anymore in the same way So, so that's the thing it's like if you think about Anon for example you think about the games that Anon was playing in the 1990s he was playing against um oh let's go here he was playing against like Kasparov Karpov these these amazing legends of the game in the 1990s so if you think about it from that standpoint he's playing these games in the 90s against these guys that should give him a huge advantage like he has all this historical knowledge that he's built up over playing for many many years however someone like Ali Reza can just go use the computer boot it up and find these games and study these games and so that whole advantage that you have from from being older and playing these games doesn't exist it just doesn't exist so that's that's the thing that that really is different and on has definitely adapted for sure but but in general um that that age experience doesn't exist and what ends up happening is then as you're a little bit older you have to work that much harder to maintain your level because you don't have that experience edge that you had before update your wins what are we to we are um we're not to uh we are uh we're at 73 I think or something okay I'll just update it to uh or no um yeah we're at 73 so I'll just update it to 80 one second you you guys want me to flex I'll flex let's update this to eight zero the big 80. okay there we go all right let's play Bishop d3 here and now I just castle and play rookie one fix your posture my posture is just fine you guys fake wins <laughs> fake wins fake votes fake everything yeah but but anyway as I was saying though I think that's that that's the reason is that because you have to put you have to expend a lot more energy and as you get older of course you have less energy so it's it's a lot harder to uh to maintain that as you get older let's go 94. Uh, I'm gonna play a3 maybe c4 I want to move the I want to get rid of this knight and kick it out of center but he can still go to b4 so I'm trying to prevent that because my bishop holds the other square okay now I just trapped his knight because here I take and here I just take and if here I just take ggs gg yo g a g okay he plays f5 now here I could play and peasant but then he takes so I was very quietly move my Knight and his Knight remains trapped all three jumps get captured and otherwise I take last stream you said your beer was gonna go grow back real quick you didn't lie yeah okay I just take the horse I go knight c4 knight d6 I guess let's go rook c1 let's take the open line with our rook it's very good his bishop is not great either it's behind the pawn now the way to win this game it's not easy um I'm gonna go here first I'm gonna try to open up this king side maybe it's a very clogged toilet here in the center of the board it's just very clogged 
So the way to play to win is now I'm going to open up the king. So I may move the king, move the rook. If takes, I'll take and then bring the rook here. Just take. XCC has definitely improved. That's not even a question. Yeah, he's improved a lot. <laughs> Flush it. <laughs> Let's go here. Oh my god. Uh, let's go bishop g5 here. Gonna play rook h1 next. So thank you to Rishi Complex as well for the third team. Thank you to Heath M for the prime. Ken Dingo for the prime. Edgy with the six months. And Sun Valley Dreamer with the 17. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Oh, sorry, what was the question? Without arrows, so we can pay attention. I mean, I cannot do. If you don't want me to do arrows, I can. For one game, I can. Okay, I'm gonna play. Uh, I mean, I have rook h7, maybe bishop h6, maybe just queen e2. Um, I'll play queen e2. And probably still, I'm gonna look to double the rooks on the h file towards that pawn on h7. King is a little bit weak, also. Um, I can take the knight, but I won't do it. I think I'm just gonna double the rooks. I gotta be careful the knight on f3 is weak, so I'll play rook h3. And now I'm going to go rook h1 and put pressure again. Rook to h1 and then put pressure. And you see how I say rook h1? I'm not even looking at the square because I know it's a safe square. So I just know I'm going rook h1, which is why I'm looking up towards the one juicy weakness here on h7. Okay, let's play rook h1. Yeah, his king is in really bad shape here. Really, really bad shape. Thank you to DS Vobo for the prime and 702 bike bike for the two months. Thank you so much. Play bullet with an eye tracker? I I mean, I could do a little bit. Sure, why not? But, yeah. Okay, now we just take. I think you dip K Joe for the prime. Thank you so much. Let's keep going. Uh, let's play the English. We haven't played any English opening yet because we're obviously not big fans of Brexit. But uh, I'll, I'll, I'll play the English just so they, they don't get super angry at me. Let's go Bishop G2. Maybe E3 and Knight E2. Maybe D4 next move. Let's go, let's go knight d5 here, take the center, knight c3 and h3. I think I'm going to go knight c3, consolidate my knight in the center of the board. This pawn is really nice too, because it holds the squares. It was just 70 wins? What the heck? I, I uh, assumed I'm going to win more games. I'm at like 74, 75 right now. Let's just castle and now play f4 and open up the file. I can actually just take. My opponent missed the fossil because he loses on the diagonal. That's that's the reason you put the bishop on the diagonal. Your opponent forgets, and then you just win the game. He resigns. Let's keep going. Uh, let's play uh, not. A, let's play the um, Nimzovich defense. Let's play knight six and d5. Let's be creative. Thank you to Chaser Jim for the 300 bits. Thank you WS0220 for the prime. Thank you so much. Let's play d5 and takes. I miss Pago. It's not the same without it. Yeah. What to do? A vat to do. A vat to do. Let's play h6 and bishop d6 and bishop g4. Maybe just here right away. I have bishop b4. Maybe even knight a5 to remove the bishop potentially. Goes here. I think I'll just take because I can take and go back. Okay, let's go back. I'm threatening d4 to fork the queen of the knight. Um, not sure what he's going to do. I'll just consolidate the pawn chain so his bishop's no good anymore. Okay, let's go here and let's just castle. Let's castle. So bad, dude. That's so bad. So bad. Let's play 94. So bad. So bad. The eye tracker's just trying where I'm looking on the board. Let's go rookie eight here. Uh, thank you to local folklore for the three bucks as well. Thank you so much. Let's 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 put pressure on this diagonal. Should be very, very good for me here. That's a free horse. I'll take it because of the pin. More pressure. Thank you for the prime. Thank you, Gubleru, for the prime. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. 
I miss I miss the lo-fi and SE. Uh, you miss a what? Sorry. Okay. I should be winning here. I go here and there's some kind of fossil or some kind of something. Something is winning. I don't know what exactly, but something's winning. C4. Uh, let's just go here. Line up a checkmate. Actually, how does he even stop it? I uh, let's play Sicilian. I haven't played any Sicilians today. I don't think. Let's play the Night or for the Dragon. Let's play El Dragone. Let's pl uh, okay, let's go here. Let's play G6 and Bishop G7. This, of course, is named after the Draco constellation. These five pawns together. So I'll do this. So that's why it's called the Dragon. He plays the kind of like eleven fish. Let's play. <laughs> I mean, actually, now that I say eleven fish, you're probably like, what on earth are you talking about? But there's a line where White goes early F4 E5, and it's called the eleven fish variation uh, against the Dragon. Um, what kind of coffee? Uh, right now, I'm drinking G Fuel, but uh, I, I sometimes drink coffee. When I do it, I drink black. Let's just take and take. No, I didn't say 11 fish. I said 11 fish. 11, not 11. 11. L-E-V-E-N. Not not 11. The 11 fish. That's named after a person, by the way. There is no such fish. But anyway, let's go here. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 11 fish. Not 11 fish. 11 fish. Anyway, whatever. You guys are just trolling me now. Let's keep going. Funny thing is, I don't think I've ever spoken about the 11 fish. I feel like there should, there would have been memes about it. Let's take and take. Yes, I did. I played chess on the internet chess club from about 1997 or early 98 until about 2011, I would say. 2011, roughly. Let's go here. Uh, I played on Fix um, very briefly in the early 2000s. Big shout out to everyone in Poland, Polska Guram, Polska Guram, as they would say. So, big shout out to everybody from Poland. There obviously have been some huge chess events that have been held on some of the Polish uh, Twitch channels. So, big shout out to everybody from Poland who's watching. Hope you guys are having a great evening, uh, wherever you are in the country. Let's just castle here. This might not be a good move, by the way, but I think I can get away with it. Let's just go here. Because if he takes a juicer, I take, take, and then I take. He just blundered because I have this one. And he should be getting checkmated here, I think. Should be getting made. Okay, let's take, let's take, let's take. Let's eat all of his pieces. He just loses all his juicers. Let's keep going.